You've met Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. It was only for a moment on the field. I'm pleased you survived. This is Lady Josephine Montelier, our ambassador and chief diplomat. I've heard much. It's a pleasure to meet you at last. And of course you know Sister Liliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spymaster. Yes, tactfully put, Cassandra. Pleased to meet you all. I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. <sighs> we need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. That didn't take long. Shouldn't they be busy arguing over who's going to become divine? Some are calling you the Herald of Andraste, and that frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy, and we heretics for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the Mages or Templars for help is currently out of the question. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the Temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading... Which we have not. The point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? It's... a little unsettling. <laughs> I'm sure the Chantry would agree. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. They aren't more concerned about the breach, the real threat. They do know it's a threat, they just don't think we can stop it. The Chantry is telling everyone you'll make it worse. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. She is not far and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. Why would someone from the Chantry help a declared heretic? I understand she's a reasonable sort. Perhaps she does not agree with her sisters. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. In the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. The Inquisition cannot remain, Ambassador. If she can't prove, it was founded on Justinia's orders. This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked her life to slow the magic of the breach. Sir Trevelyan, may I present the Marquis Durellion, one of Divine Justinia's greatest supporters. And the rightful owner of Haven. How do Elion lend Justinia these lands for pilgrimage? This Inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denver, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelden. We were honored to lend this use to Divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. Interesting, considering the Inquisition was begun by the left and right hands of the Divine. I see no written records from Sister Liliana or Seeker Pentacus that Justinia approved the Inquisition. If he won't take her at her word, I'm afraid Seeker Pentagas must challenge him to a duel. What? It is a matter of honor among the Navarans. Shall I arrange the bout for tonight? No, no. Perhaps my reaction to the Inquisition's presence was somewhat... Hasty. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. 
She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montilier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. Do the Durillions actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durillions are Orlesian. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. I apologize for the intrusion. I didn't realize you were meeting with the Marquis. You did little harm. In truth, the debate was most beneficial as practice for those to come. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask, what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montillier. Thank you. Let us hope so. Thedas' politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. Ah, Lady Trevelyan. May I have a moment? Yes, Ambassador? I'd like to discuss your parents. A little sudden, but it's time someone made an honest woman of me. What? Very amusing. This is serious. I'd like to dispatch a courier asking the bands of House Trevelyan to align themselves with us. What are your thoughts? Should we approach your family for their formal support of the Inquisition? The bands of Trevelyan never turn down a partner if there's something in it for them. From the way my relatives scramble for status, you'd think we were all lesion. That depends. How much do they like gold brocade? Valroyo has noted your lineage. It gives the Inquisition some legitimacy, although not so much as we'd hoped. Why not? You are from Ostwick. Our Legion nobles consider the Free Marches somewhat... quaint. Orle has a proper empire. Free Marches never unite until Darkspawn knock at their door. No one doubts their ferocity when it happens. Free Marchers are renowned for their tenacity. Speaking of which, I should thank you for your patience with the simple quarters. The accommodations in Haven are surely rough for someone of your birth. This can't be what you're accustomed to, Ambassador. One adjusts. I stay busy. It helps take my mind from our surroundings. And the cold. And the wildlife. And the lack of civilization for miles around. <sighs> Why anyone lived here before we found Andras's ashes, I cannot imagine. Having a few leagues of ice between me and whoever wishes me ill can't hurt. Do not say that too loudly. Chancellor Roderick is still here. Until next time, my lady. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who is she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the dwarves to secure lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. How? Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We are becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power, instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. 
Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelde, and Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? And Rassi's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants, to secure peace in Thedas. How did someone so lovely and selfless go into Orlesian politics, Lady Montelier? Well, that is, uh... <laughs> really, you give me too much credit. While you're here, I do have a question. The remaining Grand Cleric sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I don't know if a miracle from Andraste saved me any more than they do. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. Greetings. How do you and Leliana know each other? We moved through similar circles in Norlay. I believe we actually met in Valroyo. Leliana was quite an accomplished player of the game by then. What exactly do you mean when you say the game? Ah, forgive me. The game refers to the slow duels of influence among the noble and powerful of Orlay. It's a rather light-hearted name for the matter, but our legions are fond of playful touches. What exactly does your job entail? I meet with ambassadors from various factions and countries, and cement alliances with them. We are a young cause. Diplomacy is essential to our credibility. Then you speak for the Inquisition with these nobles? I do. Someone must foster goodwill on our behalf, as well as prevent controversy as news of us spreads. How heavily are our actions scrutinized? Make no mistake. Every noble house, every throne, is waiting to see what the Inquisition does next. Many are willing to pledge support, if offers are made in just the right fashion. I intend to see that they are. Tell me how you came to work for the Inquisition again. I'd been considering leaving my post in Antiva for a new challenge when Leliana recruited me. There's such unrest in Thedas, and the Inquisition seems a promising method to stop it. It's to everyone's benefit if we prevent the Mage Templar conflict from spreading further. So was it the prospect of stability that drew you here? The full impact of the Mage Rebellion has yet to be felt, and that was before the death of the Divine. The violence must be curbed before we see it turn to full-scale war. I can only imagine the bloodshed if it escalates further. I'm afraid history holds many examples of what will happen if it does. What business are the Montilliers in, exactly? We began as merchants. My ancestors founded the first trade routes to Rivain. We once sent entire fleets across the Waking Sea. But not anymore. Ah. Uh, these days, our vessels are a touch more modest. I'd swear our families have met before. Perhaps. Everyone of distinction in the Free Marches attends Lady Trevelyan's summer balls. Great Aunt Lucille always did love a party. I don't recall seeing you at any of them. I was less than sterling company when I was younger. Modest in temper, bold in deed. You know the Trevelyan family motto? Heraldry is a passion of mine. What did you do before coming here? I had the great honor of serving Antiva's crown as ambassador to Orlais. 
I'm also first in line to become the head of House Montillier, though my siblings attend to our mercantile affairs. How strong are your past loyalties? I would never have given up my position if I did not intend to fully commit to the Inquisition. We cannot fall back on borders. Antiva is as threatened as any country by the rebellions. If anything, the alliances I forged there may help our current cause. Do you think the Inquisition will continue after we seal the breach? If we prove ourselves by healing the breach, people may turn to us for other things. Protection, counsel, justice. The Inquisition offered these once to those in need. Tell me, do you believe I was saved by Andraste at the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I should much like to believe so, Your Worship. The miracles Andraste performed were so long ago, they're difficult to picture. If it were truly her and the Fade who saved you, well, in any case, many already believe you walk in the Maker's Light. Let's speak later. Farewell. So this is where it begins. It began in the courtyard. This is where we turned that promise into action. But what do we do? We know nothing about this Corypheus except that he wanted your mark. Corypheus wants to restore Tevinter. Is this a prelude to war with the Imperium? I get the feeling we're dealing with extremists, not the vanguard of a true invasion. Tevinter is not the Imperium of a thousand years ago. What Corypheus yearns to restore no longer exists. Though they would shed no tears if the South fell to chaos, I'm certain. Corypheus said he wanted to enter the Black City, that this would make him a god. He is willing to tear this world apart to reach the next. It won't matter if he's wrong. What if he's not wrong? If he finds some other way into the Fade. Then he gains the power he seeks, or unleashes catastrophe on us all. Could his dragon really be an archdemon? What would that mean? It would mean the beginning of another blight. We've seen no darkspawn other than Corypheus himself. Perhaps it's not an archdemon at all, but something different? Whatever it is, it's dangerous. Commanding such a creature gives Corypheus an advantage we can't ignore. Someone out there must know something about Corypheus. Unless they saw him on the field, most will not believe he even exists. We do have one advantage. We know what Corypheus intends to do next. In that strange future you experienced, Empress Selene had been assassinated. Imagine the chaos her death would cause. With his army. An army he'll bolster with a massive force of demons, or so the future tells us. Corypheus could conquer the entire south of Thedas, god or no god. <sighs> I'd feel better if we knew more about what we were dealing with. I know someone who can help with that. Uh, everyone acting all inspirational jogged my memory, so I, I sent a message to an old friend. He's crossed paths with Corypheus before and may know more about what he's doing. He, he can help. I'm always looking for new allies. Introduce me. Parading around might cause a fuss. It's better for you to meet privately, on the battlements. Trust me, it's complicated. Well, then, uh, we stand ready to move on both of these concerns. On your order, Inquisitor. I know one thing. If Varric has brought who I think he has, Cassandra is going to kill him. Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment, where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Still more lives in my hands. You are a beacon of law, Inquisitor, 
as others retreat from responsibility. But this needn't be bloody. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. Inquisitor, I was just inspecting our new headquarters. Foundation cracks, nesting animals, and miles from any centers of civilization. The staff must make it presentable if we're to receive any visitors of distinction. The people coming know we just survived Corypheus and a dragon. And they must be confident we are able to do so again. The mages will be gauging the Inquisition's fortitude. They should feel safe here. Do you not feel safe here? I've had difficulty forgetting Corypheus's attack on Haven. Do you know who first leapt to arms? Our workers. They were so proud of our cause. Corypheus simply cut them down. So much screaming after that first blast of fire. So many people turned to ash. I keep feeling that fire's heat on the back of my neck, too. Indeed. But you're the one who led us to safety. Well, before I return to my duties, allow me to congratulate you on your appointment as Inquisitor, my lady. I will now bring diplomatic issues to your attention, and I'm more than happy to help with any situations that arise. I'm loath to part from such pleasant company. Would you care to walk the castle with me? Oh, well, a tour then? Let me fetch the steward. That... isn't precisely what I was hoping for. Well, do let me know if you change your mind. Now I must find someone to prepare the guest quarters. And what else did Lady Forsythia say? That she'd rather drown herself than help the Inquisition. Anything else? She said she'd have us flogged alive if we allied with her brother. That does sound like her. Cheer up, Josie. We at least have her attention. You always do find the brighter side of things. We are in the midst of cementing an alliance with Lady Forsythia of Nevara, Your Worship. It's become a somewhat delicate task. Should I post more guards outside your room? That should be unnecessary, Inquisitor. I dissuaded her from sending soldiers when she learned we'd struck an accord with a brother she's feuding with. Lady Forsythia simply employs a colorful manner of speech. You're rather good-natured about threats of death and dismemberment. They are chiefly bluster, Inquisitor. Most of them. But I confess I do miss my staff from the Embassy in Antiva. It was always useful to discuss the day's visitors with them. I have time if you'd like to review things with me. I wouldn't wish to impose. If it were imposing, I wouldn't have offered. Well, I admit, there are a few potential alliances it would be good to discuss. Right on the parlor floor. In front of everyone at the soiree. Who does such a thing in front of their guests? <laughs> the Duke of Kellington, apparently. And then there's calls lurking. It frightens our guests half to death. Lord Genar still won't respond to our letters. And Sarah, can she not find a single overshirt with that mustard taint on it? Then there's Dorian. The man refuses to take anything seriously unless it suits its whim. Not to mention... Oh, oh goodness. Have we been here an hour already? It went by so quickly I didn't even notice. You're far too polite. I didn't intend to go on for so long. You must think me quite the gossip. Spending time with such an engaging woman is never unpleasant, Lady Montillier. Goodness! I'm... Well, I'm, I'm glad I haven't wasted your day. Well, I've taken up quite enough of your time already. Until next time, Your Worship. Inquisitor, is it true? 
Is the mark on your hand magic cast by Corypheus? Corypheus claimed it's a spell gone wrong. I wanted to think it was a blessing. A sign the Maker was returning to his creation. How credulous of me. Perhaps the Maker set these events in motion so long ago we can no longer see his hand in them. It would be fitting if that were true. Does it hurt? The anchor, that is. It looks strange, but it hasn't done me harm. If it did come from Corypheus, that's a small mercy. Yes? Tell me about the Montilliers. Well, uh, my parents are alive and in good health. Uh, they live in our estate in Antiva City. Of my four siblings, most attend to the running of the family vineyards. Uh, that reminds me, I must ask someone to make sure Yvette attends the spring reception at the palace. My youngest sister has no head for social engagements. Why are you overseeing your siblings' social lives? It's Antivan custom. After a certain age, the heir apparent runs the family's estate to prove they're worthy of succession. If you're unfit for the task, the heads of the house, usually one's parents, may decree a new heir. What do these Antivan heads of the households do if they don't run it? They work and provide guidance. I've taken advice from my parents. Well, mostly mother. Father's more of an artist. It's rather gauche, but we never can dissuade him from running his own salons. Between him and my siblings, Mother's looking forward to my taking over the estate. Between that and the Inquisition, when do you ever rest? Delegation helps a great deal. But managing the estate is my duty. As much work as it is, I will not shirk it. Is running your family's estate that important to you? I'm responsible for their welfare. A Montelier never shuns their familial duty. Taxing as those duties can sometimes be. Maybe your siblings could help lighten your burden. You don't know them. But Lorien in charge, or Antoine, or Yvette? No, truly. It must be me. Where were you raised, Josephine? I was born in Antiva City. But when I turned 15, Mother declared I'd attend finishing school in Val Royo. Oh, but I bawled into her skirts the day I had to leave. You must have missed her terribly. I did. And she was most unsympathetic to my wailing. But my mother only wanted the best for me. Living in Orlay was an education in itself. What did you learn at this finishing school in Val Royo? Among other things, mathematics, rhetoric, poetry, history, logic, and a great deal of etiquette. I still remember Madame Beventir switch on my knuckles when I forgot the basic tenets of Nevaran dining customs. For a dowager approaching her 80th year, she had quite the arm. How did the younger you like Valorio when you arrived? Have you ever stepped into a new city and felt the buildings couldn't possibly be real? That was Val Royo to me. So beautifully foreign. I gaped at its spires for months. Does Antiva City have nothing that compares to Val Royo? Antiva City is a jewel among the capitals. <sighs> but I did not appreciate that before I traveled. There are multitudes of places I'd like to see. Seheron, the Anderfels, whatever lies past the Amaranthine Ocean. You said the Montilliers used to run an entire trading fleet. What happened? There was a scandal in Val Royo more than an age ago. The Montilliers were forbidden from trading with Orlais. Our personal fortunes never quite rebounded. Does anyone in Orlais even remember what that scandal was? I doubt it. But the injunction persists. What exactly happened? An affair with a minor lord. Perhaps. Most other details are lost. Are you saying your family's livelihood was ruined because of a love affair no one even remembers? Essentially. Our legion politics are full of these unhappy little missteps, Inquisitor. You haven't really gone into detail about how you know Leliana. We met... Oh, let me think. 
We met the last few years of my schooling, but we became friends after I became ambassador to Ole. It seems terrifyingly long ago now. How exactly did you and Leliana reconnect in the Inquisition? I discovered my family had been overcharging a merchant we traded with for months. Our name carries a great deal of trust in Antifa. I spent weeks arranging a string of favors as suitable recompense. Apparently satisfied, the merchant extended me an invitation to her estate. Leliana greeted me in place of the merchant. I assume the entire problem was some form of trial. You assume correctly. Leliana claimed she needed someone of painful integrity for the Inquisition. I accepted, once she finally explained what it was. Do you remain close? Yes, but she's grown so much more distant than the outgoing woman I met in Val Royale. Leliana used to wander the Orlesian courts, singing the sweetest songs, charming the greatest wits. Now she collects secrets and takes risks that would make empires tremble. I worry, but she will not hear it. Does Leliana confide in you? If she enjoys revisiting our more disastrous adventures. Leliana used to concoct the most ridiculous plans. Run if you ever see her with a twine ball, a measuring stick, and a handkerchief. What's the land like in Antiva? The setter areas are quite lush. The vineyards run as far as the eye can see in some places. Antiva City, however, perches right up against the Rialto Bay. That's what I miss most. The sea crashing against the maze of the docks. I have difficulty seeing you wandering around a trading port. Everyone in Antiva City spends time by the ships, my lady. The finest restaurants and poets all make their habitation by the sea. The waterfronts never still. Lanterns are lit along the promenade, no matter what the weather. Are you ever homesick? Occasionally. When a breeze stirs the trees in the garden, I sometimes pretend it's the sound of the surf. <sighs> Do you know, I even miss those terrible squawking birds infesting the harbor. My youngest sister used to throw whole loaves of bread to the gulls. Silly thing. Who rules Antiva? Officially, the Principality of Antiva is governed by His Majesty King Fugelno II. In reality, Antiva's merchant princes rule the country in everything but name. Quite loudly, I might add. What sort of dealings did you have with these merchant families? As ambassador, I attended Privy Council meetings in a mediatory capacity. May I just say, one has never heard an argument until they've sat in on fifteen princes howling down each other's tariff suggestions. That sounds more like a mob than a meeting. It's all a part of life in Antiva. Our traditions value passion and romance. A certain exuberance of style. Are you positive you're Antivan? I can be most exuberant when it's called for. Just at the right moments and in a proper fashion. Might we speak of something else? Let's speak later. Another time. Inquisitor, I must speak with you. What is it? I must explain something first about the Montelier's fortunes. I remember you said your family had been forbidden from trading in Olay. It devastated our finances. The Montelier's have, in fact, been in debt for over a hundred years. I had no idea your family's situation was so precarious. Hardly anyone outside the family does. For generations, we've done everything to keep creditors at bay. Sold our lands to stave off interest. It's just... It is infuriating to see my family still reduced to this. I'm to become head of our house. If I sell any more of our land, my family will become destitute. That cannot be my legacy to them. Most people worry about their next meal, never mind an estate. I'm not blind, but I worry for my family. My foolish sister Yvette with her daydreams. My brothers trying to rebuild our fleet with their own hands. Is it wrong to hope they never know hardship? Is there anything I can do? I'd almost solved our problems. For a while. 
I negotiated a chance to reinstate the Montilliers as landed traders in Orlais. We could rebuild with that. But when I dispatched paperwork to Val Royale... <sighs> I've just learned my carriers were murdered. And the documents restoring my family's trading status destroyed. Who hates the Montilliers enough to do that? Leliana made inquiries that bore success. Comte Boivere, a nobleman in Val Royale, claims to know who killed my messengers. He has a request. That you come when I meet him, so he's seen publicly conferring with you. What will being seen with me gain the Comte? The Comte will drop hints at parties he's to meet with an important visitor. Allies and rivals will take note. Once he's met you, there will be speculation. The Comte will subtly spin reports to his advantage. He will use us. But if he knows who killed my people, I ask that we indulge him. If I meet this Comte, he'd better not try to wheedle anything from me. I will take full responsibility if that's the case, Inquisitor. I must know who killed my couriers just to harm my family. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Comte Boisvert. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. We appreciate your help, Comte. The death of Lady Montilly's servants must weigh heavily on you. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archives. Contract for life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montilliers' trading exile in Orlais. Overly complicated assassination plots are part of Orlesian politics, I take it. They're all too common, I'm afraid. The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Paraquettes. But the Du Paraquettes died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Paraquettes were our rivals. They drove the Montilliers from Val Royale. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. If the people who wanted your family dead are gone, why are the assassins still after you? A contract is a contract, Inquisitor. Orlesian businesses live and die by their reputations. The entire guild's welfare would be endangered if an agreement was tossed aside on a whim of time or fate. She's quite right, Your Worship. The House of Repose is doing what it feels necessary. By its standards. I assume you have a thought or two on this, Josephine? The Du Paraquettes still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a Du Paraquette could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montilier. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to haunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. You're not to have said you'd heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orle. Even an assassin's word is his bond. Does Comte Boisvert actually exist? Absolutely. The Comte's offer to reveal the killers of Lady Montilly's messengers was genuine. So was his information somehow. A nun to be tied up later. I'm guessing the actual Comte Boisvert met with a fatal accident. Comte Boisvert slumbers in a nearby closet. Nothing more. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated, monsieur. Your idea to seek out du Paraquet to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. 
I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, Willie. May we conclude with my departure? Go then. Good day, Your Worship. My lady, I pray we'll never meet again. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. You couldn't have known it would lead to this house of repose coming after you. It still shouldn't have slipped past me. I've tracked down the last two paraquets. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. We'll require a noble from Val Royaux to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. <laughs> it's so like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royaux? We can solve this without more deaths on either side. My people are ready, should you change your mind. I'll post a watch on our ambassador in case the House of Repose visits. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Valroyo. I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. You said I'd have to do some favors in Valroyo if we want to make the Duparakets lords. The Countess Dion is our first step. Her lover, a mage from the White Spire, is missing. Bring her news of him and she'll be very amenable to sponsoring the two paraquets as lords. Let's see what we have. Let them heed it. An attack was just what a matter of time. What an unexpected pleasure. The most holy you must have had a long journey to the, the city. Divine says not Might there be any I news intend from to this house? I the Inquisition. Here's a they letter from Ellerly. He's safe with his family in the Dales. Oh, my Ellerly. Oh, bless you. The Dions will sponsor the Duparakets as a family deserving of a noble title, Inquisitor. You have my word. Now, please, forgive my hastiness, but I must read Ellery's words. Make her keep you. Inquisitor! What happened here? The House of Repose decided to pay a visit. The guards arrived in time, but I should have guessed the assassins would infiltrate the servants. Are you sure they didn't hurt you? They only frightened me. It was all so sudden. Leliana assigned people to shadow me. They appear to have saved my life. I owe you everything, Sergeant. Only my duty, Ambassador. I'll talk with the Spy Master about these murderous louts. She'll find how they got in. What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We need a judge of the Royal Court to procure documents acknowledging them as nobility again. What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We must persuade Minister Belize to ratify the papers. She's in charge of these matters of rank. The minister will be at a small fete thrown by the Marquis Wiscott. I'll get you an invitation.
Thank you for seeing me in private, Minister Belize. I chastise you for taking me from the party, Inquisitor, but the Marquis throws such dull affairs, it's hardly worth it. I assume you wish to discuss your petition to elevate these du paraquettes to a minor lordship. Tell me, why should I allow you to pollute the Orlesian nobility any further than it's already been muddled? Surely, even a minister can do worse than have the Inquisition in her debt. I am a well-positioned woman. I require something more concrete than vague promises of future gifts. And do not attempt to charm me. I am far too old to tolerate it. What can you possibly provide that will make your petition worth my effort? I don't think we'll be missed from the party for a while. Are you quite serious? For the pleasure of your company, Minister. Absolutely. Lock the door. And fetch me some pillows. I received a letter from the House of Repose, Your Worship. They acknowledge their contract is null and void. There is no longer a price on my life. I'm glad you don't have to live your life looking over your shoulder anymore. I regret we were forced to deal with them. That you are endangered by my part in the game. Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer? Bards entertain the Orlesian court. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. What made you interested in becoming a bard? I was attending a university in Valroyo when I learned about bards. There was such an air of romance about them. Stories of secrets, trysts, and fascinating people. A group of us, young gentry from Antiva, decided this exciting life was for us. I don't imagine many first-born heirs join those ranks. No. I was a rather foolish exception. During one particular intrigue, I encountered a bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bard threw a knife and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. You were only defending yourself. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. From bard to diplomat is quite a change in direction. I was headed down that path for some time already. That night merely crystallized it. In all the commotion, forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Such a gracious woman deserves nothing less. I... such talk. I'm quite overcome. Should I stop? Oh, no. I mean, yes. I meant, no, I, I don't... Well, if you meant to draw a blush to my cheeks, you've completely succeeded. Let's return to Skyhold before anyone notices. Inquisitor, may I have a word? I notice you've paid Lady Montelier quite a number of compliments. Yes, I enjoy her company very much. An entanglement with our ambassador seems most unwise. I asked Josephine to join the Inquisition because we needed a diplomat, not so she could be toyed with. Is my own spy master telling me to watch myself? While it would be pity of me to tamper with your supper over this, she is a very good friend. Josephine's no stranger to courtly intrigue. But love, there she's an innocent. She has no idea you are truly attracted to her. If indeed you are. What do you have against the idea of me being attracted to Josephine? I have not known you long, Inquisitor. 
Neither has Josephine. Her heart is easily carried away. I want to be sure it's taken by someone who truly cares. So, if you feel anything towards Josephine, I want to know. Yes, I'm very attracted to Josephine. Is that so? Whatever is between you, I ask that you treat her with kindness. For her sake, as well as yours. Whatever happens, I'm glad to see Josephine has a concerned friend here. I have so few true friends these days. Those that are left, I deeply cherish. I will not trouble you any further, but I do watch over my friends. Good day, Your Worship. Well, Leliana just gave me quite the speech. What about? About us. <sighs> oh, she is impossible. Might we discuss this somewhere more private? Leliana said I was an innocent in love? More or less. Of all the... I'm quite capable of understanding our association. I've never thought your intentions were overly romantic, Inquisitor, I, I assure you. Perhaps I should have composed a ballad then, or sent roses. What? You mean you do? We've only just... I didn't wish to presume you harbored any tender feelings for me. I won't deny a certain captivation, Josephine. But we haven't even known each other a few short months. How can you declare this liking for me after such a brief time together? You've intelligence, elegance, and I always delight in your company. It seems most natural to want to be close to you. I would not object to a closer relationship between us, my lady. If that sounds agreeable to you. Nothing would make me happier. Well, then. Interesting story. I was speaking with your ambassador not long ago. Dearest Josephine, I said, how remarkably distracted and flush you seem. Whatever could be the reason. And she dropped her pen. Bravo, Inquisitor. How are you, my lady? I'm courting the most beautiful woman in the entire castle. That helps a great deal. <laughs> oh my, you flatter me much too much. How far do your roots go back to Orlais? Very far. The Montiliers used to have vast holdings in Valroyo itself. I wish I could have seen them, especially the ones bearing the family crest. The original crest design was abandoned when we were exiled from the city. I've always wanted to find a copy. Has our been together set any tongues wagging? Undoubtedly. A rumor already gave you a dozen suitors the moment you took your title. Who were these rumors pairing me with? I can only speak to what was whispered in several courts. Josephine. <sighs> to begin with, Cassandra, Leliana, Colin, Dorian, Mother Giselle, Enchanter Fiona, Chancellor Roderick, three R's, two counts, and some man named Philip. Honestly, I don't think he even exists. Why was Leliana so set against us being together, Josephine? I think nothing of it. She'd disapprove of anyone I chose to keep serious company with. Back in Valroyo, Eliana was practically my older sister. I wanted to spend some time with just you and me, Josephine. Why, that sounds lovely. what we have. Why, what's this? 
You said you wanted to see your original family crest. I found one for you. I'm astonished. I'd given up hope that any example of the early family crest still existed. It even has our first motto, back from when we had a trading fleet to speak of. From sea to shore, we tame the waves. Anything to see you smile. You've certainly succeeded. Thank you. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. I've just received the most terrible news. What is it? I'm engaged. I sense this is complicated. Tell me more. <sighs> for the past year, my mother and father have searched Antiva for a match for me. They had no idea you and I had grown so... close. Today, I received a letter declaring they've betrothed me to Lord Adorno Cielo Tranto of Antiva. I must deal with this. But until then, we cannot be seen in a compromising situation. I'm so sorry. Are you saying we should act like nothing's happened between us? No. No, not at all. But it is not right that we carry on while I am betrothed. I must break off the match first. Have you and this Antiven Lord ever even met? No. Perhaps, um, maybe at the Cotillion some years ago. Oh, this is not what I wanted to happen. I barely remember Lord Otranto. I must see to this. And to my other duties. If I can keep my mind on them today at all. Inquisitor, I'm afraid untangling my engagement to Lord Otranto will take some time. Is there anything I can do? He is Antivan. The only acceptable thing to do would be to challenge him to a duel for my favor. Every family has scandals. I'll find something to persuade Otranto to break off the match. Please, Inquisitor, no. If Otranto found out, he'd challenge you to a duel. The traditional form of dueling among Antiva nobles isn't usually fatal, but there's always a chance of harm. I hardly wish to see you skewered on a sword point for the sake of my honor. Let's see what we have. To work? Your worship. May I deliver a message from Lord Adorno Cielo Tranto of Ativa? His lordship accepts your request for a duel for the affection of Lady Montelier. He awaits your pleasure in Val Royal. Your master had better bring a first-rate healer with him. The Otrantos do not fear a fair fight, but I will convey your advice. Good day to you. I am Lord Otranto of Antiva, rightfully betrothed of Lady Josephine Montillier. Songs of your exploits have spread to my city, Inquisitor. It's humbling to make your acquaintance. It is a pity it will not last longer. Before we duel, I trust you find the weapon to your satisfaction. Am I not allowed to pick my means of defense? I am the wounded party in this duel. Tradition dictates that I select our weapons. Of course, if you fear you might be clumsy with such a refined instrument, there is no shame in a forfeit. Not on your life. Then let us begin. <laughs> An admirable start, Inquisitor.
Perhaps House Trevelyan isn't the obscure backwater I've heard it to be. I'm glad Lady Montillier isn't here, exquisite as I've heard her appearance to be. Cutting you down in front of Josephine would have given a poor first impression of House Otranto to my bride. Strange. I would think the Otrantos already have enough blood on their hands after cheating the Tarazzas. Who told you? You dare to bring up that slander here? Inquisitor, I will personally- Stop! Josephine! Lady Montillier, what a pleasure to- What are you doing? Josephine, I can't take the chance that you might have to marry him. That's not your decision. The Inquisition needs you. I need you. Yet you threw yourself into danger. Why do this? Why risk everything we've built? Why risk your life? Because I love you. You... You do? She does? Yes. Josephine, I love you so much. I love you too. Well fought. Lord Otranto. I'd assumed your liaison with the Inquisitor was an affair of passion or convenience, Lady Montillier. But I'm not fool enough to stand in the way of true affection. The Atrantos regretfully withdraw the terms of our betrothal. Thank you. Do not thank me. I know when I'm outmatched. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about arranging the duel. Given that you're in one piece, body and dignity, I forgive you. Just do kiss me again. I can't stop thinking about your duel in Val Royale. Running into the middle of the crowd, the noise, the swords flashing. I was so worried for you, but at the same time, well, it was the most exciting thing I've seen in ages. I was worried you'd still be angry that I started that duel in the first place. I was only worried for your safety. Your position allows for so little of it. You know... When I first laid eyes on you back at Haven, I hadn't an inkling we'd become so close. Something suggested you were special the moment I saw you. I'm glad it did. These moments seem so dear, especially given your greater calling. Sometimes I must remind myself that I'm required to share you with the rest of the world. Hang the world. It can survive without the Inquisitor and Josephine now and then. For now, I very much agree. I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes, and to the death. The court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. Don't worry, Josephine. We'll protect the Empress no matter what. I pray you're right. If your vision of the future comes to pass, 
The death of the Empress heralds the destruction of everything. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Thedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Selene is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Orle will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. A grand masquerade? I need to go shopping. I'll arrange for an invitation at your discretion, Inquisitor. Inquisitor, a moment, if you please. I'm sure you know how to handle most nobility, but the game is nothing like the Free March's intrigues. It is no simple matter of etiquette and protocol. Every word, every gesture is measured and evaluated for weakness. Don't they sound delightful? I'm shocked we haven't invited the court to dinner at Skyhold. The game is like wicked grace played to the death. You must never reveal your cards. When you meet the Empress, the eyes of the entire court will be upon you. You are safer in the Fade with the Fear Demon. You're just full of joy and light this evening. Everything will be fine. And Raste watch over us all. Josephine! Oh, Josephine! Is this her? <sighs> Inquisitor, please allow me to present to you my younger sister, Yvette Gabriella Montelier. There can never be too many Lady Montelliers in Thedas, can there? <laughs> Inquisitor, I've heard so much about you, but not as much as I want. Josephine writes, but she never tells me anything. Is it true? You and Josephine are going to elope and move to the Anderfels and join the Grey Wardens and fight Darkspawn? Yvette! I want to know. I already packed our bags, didn't I, darling? I knew it! Inquisitor, please give her no more ammunition. I beg you. Tell me about yourself, Lady Yvette. This is the first time I've encountered any of Josephine's family. She would forget to mention the artists. I've been studying painting under Antiva's royal tutors. You should be proud, Josie. I'm going to be exhibiting my work next season in the city's biggest salon. Have you actually sat down and finished the painting yet? I must wait for my inspiration. And I must wait for your tutor's speech. This may be my only chance to hear about when Josephine was a girl. Oh, yes. As she told you about when she was ten and... Yvette, stop. Fine. Uh, what about when we were climbing the cliffs by the... No. She once told the Duke of... Absolutely not. Hmm. She still plays with a doll collection when no one's looking. Yvette, that's absurd. Absolutely preposterous. <laughs> Which power should the Inquisition throw its weight behind? Selene has held the throne successfully for years. I see no profit in ousting her. Gaspard has run military campaigns, but never a kingdom. His transition would be, let us say, chaotic. Enjoying the ball? I see many of them. The dancing is so dull, your worship. But the Empress's gallery is magnificent. Yvette. Sorry, Josie. Go on, Josephine. Half a royal must be empty. So many of the Empire's finest are in attendance. They've noticed the Empress paying you special attention, but they don't quite know how to take advantage of it yet. This uncertainty won't last long, I'm afraid. I'll see you later. Another time! You'll be the talk of the court for months. We should take you dancing more often. It's a relief to do something other than fight demons and horrors. You still face demons and horrors. These ones are simply better dressed. Were you dancing with Duchess Florian? More importantly, what happened in the servants' quarters? I heard there was fighting. I hope you have good news. It appears the peace talks are crumbling. Morrigan helped me get into the servants' quarters, where I found a group of Venatori and Gaspard's dagger. The man would truly do anything to become emperor. Then, the attack on the Empress will happen tonight. Warning Selene is pointless. She needs these talks to succeed, and to flee would admit defeat. Then perhaps we should let her die. You have an idea, Leliana. What Corypheus wants is chaos. 
Even with Selene alive, that could still happen. To foil his plan, the Empire must remain strong. This evening, someone must emerge victorious. And it doesn't need to be Selene. She's right. Do you realize what you're suggesting, Leliana? Sometimes, the best path is not the easiest one. You're asking me to decide what's best for Ole? More than that, whoever controls the Imperial Throne will affect all of Thedas. You cannot stop Corypheus without a decision. You must support someone, or all is lost. Then we should support Selene. She is the rightful ruler. Why would we say otherwise? Because she led Orlais to this point. I say Gaspard, provided his sister is wrong about him. I would suggest Briala. She could bring true peace, not only to the Empire, but also to its elves. This is, however, your decision, Inquisitor, not ours. I can't decide this. Not yet. You must. Even inaction is a decision, Inquisitor. You could speak to Selene in the ballroom, but she won't act. Not without proof. If Gaspard is guilty, he'll admit nothing. If he's innocent, he knows nothing. We need the truth. What did Duchess Florian tell you? She said Gaspard's mercenary captain is in the Royal Wing, that he knows about the assassination. Which could be a trap. Or a lead. Either way, you should search the private quarters in that wing for clues. Then get me access, and in the meantime, get your soldiers into position. At once. Be careful, Inquisitor. Is everything all right? You look troubled. I'm just worn out. Tonight has been very long. It was a tumultuous evening, but Orle is safe now. It was worth the struggle. Is there anything I can do? Um, can I get you anything? A drink, perhaps? Would you care to dance with me, Lady Josephine? I would love to, my lady. How bracing to be in the thick of the game again. The last time I was at Alam Shiral was Countess Letienne's wedding. There were a dozen affairs, five secret alliances, and a duel between two chevaliers over the vintage of an Antivan port. But until the Duchess was unmasked, I've never seen the Winter Palace in shock. The nobility needed a shock. Corypheus played them all for fools. I agree completely. The game's become increasingly insular in the past few years. Corypheus skillfully took advantage. It's disturbing so few people in the Orlesian court were aware of the Duchess's machinations. You'd think the game's as great as players would spot a murderer in their midst. As I said, insularity. Familiar rivals become the only ones worth sparring with. But let's not lose sight of victory. Your actions at the ball have secured us allies and favors alike. My favorite moment of the evening is still our waltz in the garden. <sighs> I could have danced with you for hours. We must do it again sometime. With an Illuvion, Corypheus could cross into the Fade in the flesh. Indeed, the Inquisitor can attest that these artifacts still work, if one knows how to use them. What happens when Corypheus enters the Fade? Why, he will gain his heart's desire and take the power of a god. Or, and this is more likely, the lunatic will unleash forces that tear the world apart. I won't allow it. I can't. Indeed, should Corypheus succeed, do not doubt you would be first to feel his holy wrath. Pardon me, but does this mean everything's lost unless we get to the Illuvian before him? Corypheus has a head start, no matter how quickly our army moves. We should gather our allies before we march. Can we wait for them? We should send our spies ahead to the Arbor Wilds. Without support from the soldiers? You'd lose half of them. Then what should we do? For starters, we don't let Corypheus worry us to death. Imagine how embarrassing that would be. Josephine, have our allies send scouts to meet us in the wilds. Leliana, your fastest agents will join them. 
Together, we'll have enough spies to slow down Corypheus's army until Cullen's soldiers arrive. <laughs> Such confidence. But the Arbor Wilds are not so kind to visitors. Old elven magic lingers in those woods. We'd be remiss to not take advantage of your knowledge, Lady Morgan. Please, lend us your expertise. Tis why I came here. Although it is good to see its value recognized. Any further instructions, Inquisitor? Remember what Corypheus has done while you plan. Every loss, every setback, every death. Let him learn what it means to be an enemy of the Inquisition. We'll hound Corypheus in the wilds before he can find the temple or this Illuvian. Inquisitor, I hear this Illuvian lies in a temple nearby. No doubt you're departing for it now. Be safe. Promise me you'll leave the instant the fight comes closer. I promise. Return once you can. We must plan for you to fight one last duel, my darling. This time for all of us. Once you find Corypheus, I suppose we must... wait. I just want to see your face again once this is over. I'd be happy to arrange that. Please be sure to. I, I hope that you'll... Maker, I wish you didn't have to go. You mean the world to me, Josephine Montelier. Then return to me safely. <sighs> I must attend to some tasks before you draw out our enemy. Do go before I begin to cry. Did you find what you need, Morrigan? I can match the Darkspawn Magister's dragon. Yes. As for matching Corypheus, that is up to you, Inquisitor. We don't even know where he is. Then all that remains is to find Corypheus before he comes to us. We've been looking for his base since all this began, with no success. His dragon must come and go from somewhere. Oh, what about the deep roads? We could send word to Orzammar, a higher envoys to... It seems Corypheus is not content to wait. He's in the Valley of Sacred Ashes. You either close the breach once more, or it swallows the world. But that's madness. Wouldn't it kill him as well? Inquisitor, we have no forces to send with you. We must wait for them to return from the Arbor Wilds. Just as Corypheus expects, I suppose. into the fade. Solus? The orb. I know you wanted the orb saved. I'm so sorry. It is not your fault. There's more, isn't there? It was not supposed to happen this way. No matter what comes, I want you to know you shall always have my respect. Inquisitor! Are you alive? Victorious. 
I see. What a novel result. And it seems the breach is finally closed. Looks that way. What do we do now? We go back to Skyhold. A moment, my lady. My agents have found no trace of Solus. He has simply vanished. If he does not wish to be found, there's likely nothing we can do. But I will keep looking. It's odd that he would just leave without a word. You said he was upset about the orb. That can't be the only reason. Ugh, oh, I should never have hired new caterers so late. Leave it be, Josie. Everything's fine. It is not! I'm so sorry. Nothing's quite as it should be. Oh, do you like the drinks? I'm not sure about them. The drinks are fine. It's been a wonderful evening. I hope you're not just saying that. You're not, are you? What a disaster. So many was late, the invitations to our guests barely went out at all, and... and... It was so... Wonderful to prepare for a small banquet instead of the end of the world. Do you know what everyone is talking about tonight, from commoners to kings? Us. Thedas is discussing the success of the Inquisition. Are you descending into open boasting, Lady Montelier? I can scarcely think of a better time. Truly, we will never forget those we lost. But for tonight, to victory. May I join you? I wanted to catch you. Uh, the celebrations appear to be winding down with the sunrise. I've never witnessed such a lovely sight. Nor I. Sometimes your words are so sweet, they ache. That's love. That's you. It's been good to have this celebration, free of what the future holds. Whatever awaits us, my lady, I know only one thing. I would never have you face it alone. the first enchanter to the throne of the divine was a bold decision. If she can quell and rest, Lady Vivienne will hold more power than any mage in Southern Thedas. May I pass on an observation? Please do. I realize you and Madame Vivienne have become friendly, Inquisitor, but I wonder how she'll reshape the Chantry. 
You may recall her views are somewhat conservative on these matters. Another parade, another bloody negotiation. Smiles, everyone. We must be careful how we present ourselves. Why did Divine Victoria call the Exalted Council? She's kept Orlé from bothering us for the last two years. At increasing political cost, yes. She has done all she can, but the Exalted Council has become necessary. Orlé would control us, and based on their many marriage proposals, they have specific plans for you. Our real concern is Ferelden. They would see us disbanded entirely. Oh. Is everything all right? Yes. Well, I wanted to speak with you, and now you're here. Should I leave and come back later so you can try again? Always with clever suggestions. Maybe you should sit. I can stand. Maybe I should sit. Inquisitor, I want you to know that I am your friend. I will always be your friend. Oh, well, that's... So I hope to give you sound advice on this momentous day. Do what is in your heart, my friend, no matter what anyone might tell you. That's a lovely sentiment, Cassandra. Marriage is much more than a lovely sentiment, Inquisitor. Marriage? Josephine is a wonderful woman. If you're clear on your path to... You're not proposing to anyone. I am going to kill Varric. Why do I believe everything he says? Why? He said I was going to propose. He mentioned a proposal. I suppose I filled in the blanks. Or he did this on purpose. That dwarf gets entirely too much joy from my discomfort. I might get married. I've thought about it. I suspected as much. Being Inquisitor has brought you good things. Many good things. But only a few have been by your choice. Take what happiness you can from those and do not let them go. That is all I meant to say. Advice from a friend for the days to come. Darling, you made it. Excellent. I scheduled this appointment ages ago, and they do appreciate punctuality. Appointment? With the Imperial Garden Spa, of course. You work so hard, my dear. I wanted to treat you. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Of course it is, darling. That's the only kind I have. What are the cheese wheels for? It pains me that you even have to ask. You've clearly been living too long in barely civilized conditions. Did you hear something? Relax, darling. It's spa day. How have you been? It seems ages since we've spoken. I hope all is well with you and Ambassador Montillier. Things are excellent. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to hear it. You've done so much, darling. You deserve to be happy. You must be keeping very busy. A divine's work is never done, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Don't you feel better, my dear? This place really does work miracles. 
What happened? Darling, it's spa day. Don't fret. You'll undo all the good they've done. Come along, Inquisitor. They have other appointments, you know. It's so good to see you, darling. I've been fielding Orlesian diplomats all afternoon. Have they given you trouble? Not at all. It is quite alarming. It means they are all saving themselves up for later. Would you walk with me? I should like to take some air before the Exalted Council becomes inescapable. The palace has been most accommodating. We are, after all, here at their insistence. But the ministers may... No. No more talk of the Council. This meeting was to spend time with you in a more relaxed fashion. Then why can I still see those wheels turning in your head? <sighs> Work carries a certain momentum. The truth is, there is a small entertainment happening tonight, to which I may be able to find a pair of invitations. You'd like me to go with you? Very much so. In all the years you've worked with Orlais, you've had so little time to enjoy its culture. I do wish you'd warned me the game would take more work after Halam Shiral. <laughs> it's strange. Those were somehow simpler times. Sometimes, I'm afraid I do not make enough time for you, my love. Please, come with me tonight. And what is this small entertainment? Something to ease our minds. I would very much like to surprise you with the details. If it makes you happy, how can I refuse? Oh, wonderful. I was worried we wouldn't find the time. The past years have been so busy. We have earned at least a few moments of rest. A calm night out sounds... Oh, bravo! Bravo! I've been in battles that were quieter than this. Oh, yes. What a stupendous voice Lady Brask has. Her D-sharp once shattered an entire conservatory. But tell me, did you enjoy the performance? The performance pales in comparison to the lovely lady I saw it with. You are sidestepping the question. Love leaves my tongue tied. Well, in that case, I suppose allowances can be made. I do hope you recovered from your night at the opera. Any ear ringing should go away in a day or two. Thank you, Your Holiness. Now, Artigan, as to your concerns... The Inquisition established an armed presence in Ferelden territory. You outright seized Caer Bronach in Crestwood. Yes, from bandits. Would you like us to give it back to them? Your help was appreciated two years ago, Inquisitor. Now order has been restored, yet you remain. Invading under pretext of restoring order is exactly what the Grey Wardens did to us centuries ago, and we exiled them. Now the Inquisition is doing the same thing with Grey Wardens in their ranks. Your concern is ill-founded. The Grey Wardens have proven their worth time and again. Of course Orle tolerates this interference. The Inquisition is the only reason Selene still has the throne. Rest assured, Tegan, the Empire of Orle will not stand idle if the Inquisition oversteps its bounds. Unlike Ferelden, however, Orle understands that these were the well-intentioned mistakes of a young organization. An organization in need of a guiding hand. Yours, no doubt. Pardon me, Inquisitor. Sister Leliana asked to speak with you in private. My apologies. An urgent matter has come to my attention. Ambassador Montelier, can you handle this for a short while? I... 
Of course, Inquisitor. This is highly irregular. Are we not even worth the Inquisitor's time? Inquisitor, I thought you would want to see this. A canary warrior in full armor. How did he get into the Winter Palace? So, what would the left hand of the Divine see when she looked at this? This is a warrior, not a spy. Part of the Antam, the canary military. Most of his wounds come from a fight against someone using magic. But at least a few are from a blade. He was badly hurt, separated from his allies, and made it here before he died. But how? Would the Iron Bull know anything about this? I asked, and he is as surprised as we are. Since becoming Talvashov, he has had no contact with his people. He seems frustrated at not knowing more. <laughs> Deadly mysteries at the Winter Palace. Throw in a Hulla statue and some Caprice coins and it's just like old times. Can Josephine manage the diplomats while I look around? She will be fine. It's all speeches and posturing for the first few days anyway. I will ask Divine Victoria to call a recess for now. I will also have our friends ready themselves for battle if need be. You think that's likely? I think the Exalted Council may be more exciting than we expected. One dead canary was bad enough. Now we have more, and they're hostile. This makes no sense. The canary may not be friendly to the Inquisition, but they have no reason to attack us. They also have no reason to be here, or using Illuvians at all. I've had the mirror placed under guard for now. It appears the relative peace and quiet of the last two years is coming to an end. First the Blight, then Mages and Templars, then Corypheus, and now this. Can't we go ten years without the world falling to pieces? We must ensure that the Canari do not disrupt the negotiations. The Exalted Council is in a very delicate state. I'm certain you can soothe the nobles' ruffled feathers while we solve the real problem. Not when the Inquisitor insults everyone present by walking out in the middle of the talks. Our only advantage is that Orlais and Ferelden are divided in goal and grievance. If they unite against us, Divine Victoria will have no choice but to support their claims. We could lose everything. I know we're asking a lot of you, Ambassador. I promise we won't make this any harder for you than necessary. I know, my love. I'm sorry. I will attend to the Exalted Council. And while Josie does that, we will investigate. I'll head back to the crossroads. We need to find out what the Kunari are doing and why they attacked. And I'll have a quiet word with our honor guard. I'm glad to see you safe after venturing into the crossroads. I do not have to tell you to be careful, my love, but... Tell me, these strange spaces past the Alluvians, are they safe to explore? None of it has been as bad as the Nightmare in the Fade. I can tell you that. I will take your word for it. And yet... You've accomplished so much in the calm of these past years. I wish you did not have to imperil yourself for us. Again. I wish I didn't either. I'll be glad when this Kunari business is over. You've already made headway. Let us hope it is soon. I will do what I can here. Once the Kunari are dealt with, brace yourself. The Council is just as relentless. Dragon's breath. <laughs> the Kunari always enjoy their metaphors. But what does it mean? Who knows? Canari agents moving through Illuvians to attack the South is bad enough already. I still do not understand why they accused the Inquisition of serving Fenerel. We know that Mithal actually exists. It's possible Fenerel is still here in some form, too. What you describe in the ruins certainly implies that the Dread Wolf of Elven legend is a real person. But how does that implicate us? What made them decide that the Inquisition serves this Fenherel? Hopefully we will learn more after we have stopped them. Let's see the Exalted Council try to disband the Inquisition after we've saved them from this Dragon's Breath. We must find out what Dragon's Breath is first. 
For now, our only lead is the Canari leader, the Vidisala. Gentlemen! My apologies, Lady Josephine. There has been an incident with one of your soldiers. How dare you! It was bad enough that the Inquisition chose not to inform the exalted council of the Kunari Corpse. Orle would have been happy to help with the matter. But now your own guards are attacking servants? You have overstepped your bounds. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, gentlemen. I'll see to this personally. Thank you, Inquisitor. Orle stands ready to assist the Inquisition, as always. Secrets and lies. Do you understand why we fear your Inquisition? You act as if you're the solution to every problem. How long before you drag us into another war? What's going on here? The Orlesians tried to take one of our people, Inquisitor. We've secured the area. This is the Winter Palace. You cannot simply seize control when one of your guards attacks a servant. The Inquisition is handling this. When some noble commits a crime of fashion, you can take over. I only asked what he was doing. And when I refused to bow to the Inquisition's dogs, you attacked me! How would you like us to handle the situation, Inquisitor? That barrel there, where did it come from? I was ordered to bring wine for the guests. You're lying. Your Inquisition soldiers are completely out of control. No, we're in control. Keep talking and you'll find yourself in chains. I apologize for my guard's actions. My people will take her into custody with your permission. As you say, Inquisitor, Lord Cyril will hear about this. Inquisitor, I also found this by the barrel. I can't read the language. Did you resolve the problem with the guard? The guard is the least of our problems. Someone smuggled Gatlock barrels into the Winter Palace. Smile, Inquisitor. There are many eyes upon us. At least now we know the true extent of the dragon's breath. How are you still smiling? Years of training as a bard, Inquisitor. We cannot show weakness now. Enemies could be watching, or we can let them see his idle conversation between two friends. You think the Dragon's Breath is these Gatlock barrels? Of course. A surprise attack, even through the Illuvians, would have met fierce resistance. But if everyone at the Exalted Council died in an explosion, the South would be rudderless, vulnerable to attack. This is what Corypheus should have done after the explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. An attack as swift and unstoppable as the breath of a dragon. The guard who confronted the servants said she found this note near one of the barrels. It looks like Kunari writing. Let me see. I picked some up from the Iron Bull, though I'm told my accent is atrocious. These are orders for positioning the Gatlock in the palace. When duty has been performed, report to the Vidisala through the mirror marked by a bookcase. I've been hoping to meet the esteemed Vidisala. How nice of her to invite us over. Good. While you do that, I will have agents locate the Gatlock barrels and remove them safely. I will also send word to my foreign contacts. We must see where else this dragon could strike. Your agents confirm there are Gatlock barrels in Denerin's palace? Yes, and in Val Royale and across the Free Marches. The Winter Palace is not the only target. The Canari are one order from destroying every noble house in the known world. Oh, there is a bright side. Warning the Ambassadors will remind them of the Inquisition's value. Not when the Inquisition is responsible for that threat. This is our fault. Fault? No. But our responsibility. <sighs> How did it happen? The Elven servant handling the barrels has disappeared. Notes in his quarters suggest he was a Canary spy. But the servant was Orlesian. That implicates Orle, not us. But the barrels arrived at the Winter Palace on the Inquisition Supply Manifest. <sighs> How are we supposed to fight a war when we can't even trust our own people? 
Do you know who got the barrels onto the Inquisition Manifest? Yes, and several of the Inquisition's elven workers have gone missing. I had their backgrounds checked. They joined the Inquisition after fleeing the chaos in Kirkwall. I remember when Kirkwall was at its worst. Many of the city's elves converted to the Kune, trying to find a better life. And the Canari turned them into spies. A few years ago, we railed at the mages at Redcliffe for becoming corrupt. We did the same to the Grey Wardens. Huh. <laughs> Look at us now. I fought to protect the Inquisition in this exalted council. And for what? So we could deceive and threaten those we claimed to protect? Once we locate the spies... This isn't about the spies! You hid the Kunari body. You've all but seized control of the Winter Palace. We did what was right, not what was politically convenient. Do you know what this has cost us with Orlais and Ferelden? They are planning to dismantle us as we speak. And perhaps they are right. Damn it! We save Ferelden, and they're angry. We save Orlay, and they're angry. We close the breach twice, and my own hand wants to kill me. Could one thing in this fucking world just stay fixed? I need to get to the Davarad. You can all fight amongst yourselves once I'm... Once I'm back. Thank you, Inquisitor. Would you... Would you like us to inform the Exalted Council of the danger? Yes. If we fail, the Exalted Council needs to know what happened. I will inform them personally. Leliana... I can... No, your job is hard enough already. This is my responsibility. I'll have guards ready at the Alluvian, in case the Canari attack the palace. Make a watch over you. There's still the matter of the Anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. And we are almost out of time. The Mark will eventually kill you. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. If I live, I'm coming to stop you. I know. Take my hand. I'm sorry. Live well, while time remains. Agree something must be done. But we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Canari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, I doubt you would be alive to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. You all know what this is? A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach Find those responsible and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. It wasn't a formally authorized treaty that saved Ferelden's people. It wasn't careful diplomacy that ended your inane civil war. It was never about the organization. It was about people doing what was necessary. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a world to save. Again. Effective immediately, 
The Inquisition is disbanded. My agents have found nothing. With the Illuvians, he could be anywhere. With the Inquisition officially disbanded, we have no army, no formal alliances. We have what we truly need. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will stop Solus by any means necessary.